Roma are a powerhouse in Italian football, but for the last 10 years, they certainly haven't been playing like it. They've only won one trophy in the last decade, with that being the Europa Conference League just two years ago. But this season, they're just about in the top six. They've just been knocked out of the Europa League as well. And for me, guys, this simply isn't good enough for a team like Roma. So I'm going to step in as their brand new manager for the next 10 seasons. The goal is to win them as many trophies as possible, make them the kings of Italy once again, and ultimately make them Europe's most dominant club. But that takeover wheel is back once again to make my life either a thousand times easier at Roma or a living hell. So here is the starting 11 we've loaded into with Roma and despite this team not looking that good on paper, believe me there is some bloody potential in this squad. I mean they've already got some ballers in the team anyway like Juan Luca Mancini, Romelu Lukaku well known from Chelsea, Chris Smalling and of course Paolo Dybala. And on top of that they've got talented youngsters too like Eduardo, both like Nicola Zalewski and of course attacking midfielder Tommaso Baldanzi who I'm definitely going to try and get the best out of. But on the flip side guys it's an aging team as you can see from our highest rated players about four or five of them are in the 30s now however we do start our journey with Roma with a lot of money in the budget 75 million euros to be exact and as you can see from the leaderboard Man City are still top dogs and it is going to be very difficult to try and beat them in this video but don't write Roma off just yet man because this team has definitely got the potential to catch up with them on that leaderboard now guys the first thing I've done is switch the formation to a modified 4 triple 2 now it's a modified one just to ensure that the players I want in the team actually fit into it. But this time I'm using the counter-attacking tactical vision. This is purely because we've got quite a bit of pace up top and I feel that that's best utilised on the break. And after meddling with the team a bit, this is, in my opinion, the best and strongest starting 11 we can field. Now remember, we do have a tidy budget of 75 million to spend this year. However, we haven't yet spun that wheel and we all know how quickly that wheel can turn our season upside down before it even begins. So let's go to it in season one to see what it's got in store for us. So here we go guys, season number one spinning this wheel. What is it going to be? Overpaying, what the hell is this? Only sign players via their release clause. Oh, that's a great start. Now this does put me in a bit of a pickle because out of this starting 11, there are a couple of positions I'd like to improve, but with 75 million and only activating release clauses, we're not going to be able to make that happen. For example, guys, Christensen's not even our player who's on loan to us from Leeds United and he's our best right back, so ideally we could do with replacing him. However, thinking about it the obvious choice is replacing Rui Patricio guys he's 35 years old 80 overall granted but as soon as the season starts he's going to go down to 79 rated just like that I mean maybe I am overestimating just how much their release clauses are going to be maybe with 75 million I can afford to bring in both but like I've just said guys if there's only one position I can improve you better believe it's bringing in a better goalkeeper and I have found a very good replacement for Rui Patricio 21 year old Lucas Chavaleri 79 overall his release clause is 48.3 million we can definitely afford it. And there we go, guys. Our first signing is done and dusted after activating Lucas Chavalier's release clause. Well, here lies the problem, guys. We've got 25 million left. And I have been looking at the right backs with the release clause. And let me tell you something. The players that have got a release clause of 25 million just aren't worth bringing into the team. So instead, guys, I'm just going to put the money into improving our coaching system and renewing people's contracts. But there's also going to be a bit of outgoing business. These players are all going out on loan. And you may be wondering why Tammy Abraham's going out on loan. That's quite simple. Lukaku's in the team. And whilst he's in the team, Abraham isn't getting a sniff, unfortunately. But as we head into season one, this is how the team is lined up. Now, I'm not unrealistic. I know for a fact fact it's going to be very difficult to win trophies with a team this week but to be honest I'm not too fussed about that I'm just hoping our youngsters like Baldanzi like Chavalier like Zalewski and Eduardo all improve massive amounts because if that happens that sets our future up with Roma very nicely and once that happens who knows guys we might just beat Real Madrid and Manchester City on that leaderboard but in fairness guys I think we're off to a decent start we haven't won the Serie A but we are in the top four and that's way better than they're doing in real life and we made it to the semis of the Copa Italia and once again guys I'm pretty certain we made it further than they did in real life too but we made it to the exact same spot in the Europa League Liverpool knocked us out in the semi-finals 5-2 on aggregate it's a shame but Liverpool are Liverpool after all as for the stats guys they're pretty impressive Pellegrini, Dybala, Romelu Lukaku even Cristante gained more than 10 goals too and just look at the team as well man Boldanzi's now 82 rated Zalewski's 80 rated Bove's now 79 rated and Chevalier's 83 rated 
seen all four of our youngsters coming in clutch. But as you can see from the leaderboard, we've got a long way to go before we're catching up with Real Madrid and, of course, Manchester City. But remember, guys, this is only season one of this takeover. We've got nine years left in charge of Roma, man, and I absolutely feel like they'll be very successful years. But before we go any further, did you guys know I'm in a race with Raman this tweet prior to year to 100,000 subscribers? I mean, come on, guys. I cannot let this guy beat me. So if you guys are new around here and want to see more content like this, make sure you leave this video a big old thumbs up and more importantly, smash that subscribe button. Help me beat Raman to 100k. But here we go, guys. Season number two is underway. What is this? Darby Della. What's that? Darby Della Capitale. Simulate every game of Lazio. If you lose, they get your highest rated player. So don't... Oh my... God, come on, man. Why don't we get one of their best players if we win? The good news, though, guys, we've got 132 million to make sure that we don't lose against Lazio because, quite honestly, I'm not ready to say goodbye to our highest rated players just yet. Now, I'm thinking we improve this back line a bit more. I mean, Kars Dorp isn't even a Ryback, for goodness sake, and Christensen's back at Leeds United now. And there's also Chris Smalling that we've got to deal with. Granted, he's 82 overall, but he's 34 years old. That rating won't stay like that by the end of this season. So, to replace Chris Smalling, I spent 47.1 million on on Jose Maria Jimenez, he's 29 years old, a very, very good player, and honestly, I definitely feel like he'll help us beat Lazio twice over. Which leaves us 80 million to spend on a right back, and honestly, I don't think we even need to spend 80 million on him, because I'm going for a right back who literally never lets me down. But ladies and gents, this player was not cheap. It cost us 6.5 million to sign Diogo Dello on a five-year deal. The guy's 25 years old, 83 overall, and I'm telling you now, he is definitely going to turn out to be one of our best players in this takeover. Mark my words on that. And I'm happy to let this team go into Season 2, to be honest. Obviously, we probably won't win any trophies in Season 2, but let's be real, guys. That's not our main concern this time. Our main concern is not losing to Lazio, Roma's biggest rivals, if I'm not mistaken. But let's be honest, looking at that team, it's a decent side, but we should be beating these guys both times. Let's see if I'm right now. The first. Oh, there we go. We beat them 3-0 away from home. No players are going to Lazio just yet. But this time, we're playing them at home, and Paolo Dybala is up for grabs. If we win, we keep him. If they beat us, they get him for free. No! Oh my god, Lazio have beaten us 2-1. Bro, we've lost Paolo Dybala. I'm honestly so gutted. I know we only had like two or three years left with him at best, but he's 90 overall, and we've now got to give him for free to Roma's biggest rivals, if I'm not mistaken. And there he is, guys. Roma fans, look away because your boy Paolo Dybala now plays for Lazio. I honestly don't know what more we could have done to get the double over Lazio, but it's done now. Dybala's left to join Lazio, so let's go to the end of the season to see how we've done overall. Well, Dybala's departure has been noticed. We've dropped down to fifth in the league, and Lazio have gone to second. You are kidding me, man. It's ironic, isn't it? We lose Dybala to Lazio, and they finish higher than us. But check this out. We've won our first trophy of this takeover already with Roma by winning the Super Cup. And we've once again made the semis to the Coppa Italia. Surely one of these days we've got to get to the final. And we made the UCL semi-finals as well. Atletico did get the better of a 6-4 in aggregate, but that is a testament to just how good we are. And the stats are just as good as last year's Pellegrini, Abraham stepping up to the plate, but Dante getting a better showing this time, and Belotti getting 10-1 too. By the way, let me know in the comment section who you think is going to be our top goal scorer and assister. I feel like Abraham's going to be our top goal scorer, whilst Bull Dante is going to be our top assist. Now, whilst we haven't been successful in winning trophies in the first two seasons, the progression of this team in the first two seasons, however, is a different story. Everybody stepped up to the plate. I mean, when you look at the highest rated players in the team, not only is it a relatively young squad overall, but everybody's in the high to mid 80s, and that is a very good sign already. So I feel like whilst we haven't been very successful up to this point winning trophies from now on, that might change. But then again, that wheel might have something to say about it. So with that being said, ladies and gents, let's see what the wheel does have to say about that we're finally getting a good one free pass do what we want thank god for that and on top of that we've got 180 million euros to spend on basically whoever we want if we want to this is absolutely brilliant and just what we needed and it should come as no surprise that i am going to get a striker in place of andrea Bellotti. i mean the guy's 78 overall and to be honest i do have an idea of who i want to bring back i really want to bring paolo dybala back but he's worth between 142 and 113 million i just don't think it's going to be worth it for two or three years of service. Especially when these other positions we could focus that money on, for example, Cristante and both in that centre midfielder role. I mean, Cristante is 30 years old. Now, we're going to get a maximum of three good years left out on him, so I think it's best to get ahead of the curve. As for Eduardo Booth, believe me, I don't want to 
replacing, but his development plan says to me that his potential is already being reached at 23 years old. So instead of blowing all of our money on one player in Paolo Dybala as much as I'd want to, I'm going to put this 180 million on trying to bring in a better striker than Belotti and a couple of better centre midfielders if I can afford it. Now to replace Belotti, I'm going for Matthias Tal from Stade Rene. He's 20 years old, a very good player already. Granted, he's going to be expensive, but he's an exciting prospect. And that says to me, this guy's a future world-class player in the making. I'm also signing Ryan Gravenberch from Liverpool. This guy's an absolute monster at six foot three, and he's only 23 years old. This one's just a no-brainer. But these guys together were not cheap. 119.2 million euros is what it cost to bring both of these players to Roma. Don't think for a second I regret it, though, because Gravenberch and Tal are going to absolutely take Roma to that next level. But we do still have 48 million to spend, and honestly, I feel like we can get a ball with this kind of money. And I like the looks of Palacios from Real Sociedad. He's only 26 years old, so we can probably keep this guy till the end of this takeover, and he's a very goddamn good player, too. The only issue is he's worth a lot of goddamn money, so if we ought to make this deal happen, we're going to have to be damn good at negotiating. So I'm offering Brian Cristante alongside 40 million as well. That's 84 million in total, so I reckon these guys might actually go for this. And they've gone for it. Oh my god, that is absolutely fantastic news. Out with the old and in with the new. And there he is, guys, in our Roma kit, and that officially concludes Season 3's transfer window. And honestly, for the first time since this takeover started, I feel very confident that this team is going to win trophies left, right, and centre. Especially with the signings we've made this season, man. Tal, Gravenberge, and Palacios are going to be absolute game changers. Or maybe not, as we are third in the Serie A once again. Lazio are top of the table this time. We've lost the title to Lazio, man. This just can't be happening. We've also made our third Coppa Italia semi-final and lost it. Are we the Italian bottle job? Seriously, is that where we're at with Roma? And we also made the quarters of the Europa League before Wolfsburg knocked us out. This just isn't good enough, guys. A team this good should absolutely be challenging for the title and should be winning at least one or two trophies every year. I mean, look at the stats for goodness sake. Abraham, Pellegrini, Belotti's there for some reason. Why is he getting more game time than Tal? I mean, Tal's twice the player he is. One way or another, though, guys, from next season onwards, we've got to start winning trophies left, right, and centre with Roma. Otherwise, it is going to be very embarrassing for Roma on that leaderboard. But as we move into season four of this takeover, what's the wheel going to give us this time? Hard work pays off. What's this? The boys have improved in trade and give the starting 11 players a plus three in overall. That is absolutely phenomenal. This legit may just be what we needed to actually start winning trophies left, right, and centre. If this doesn't do it, nothing will. And just look at the team now, man. We've got five players who have a 90 overall in that starting 11. And we've got 173 million euros that we're allowed to spend to further improve this squad. And I think it's about time we put this money towards the bets because quite honestly, guys, the starting 11 can be left alone for a bit. So I spent the combined total of 8 million euros to bring attack midfielder Malamed into the team as well as striker Gondau into the team too. I also signed Aaron Hickey for 39.2 million too. And to wrap up this transfer, we know I spent 34.95 million on Bart Verbruggen. And our squad depth's gone from pretty damn shocking to pretty damn stacked, if you ask me. And not only that, the starting 11 looks absolutely phenomenal as well. This year has to be our best one yet. Otherwise, I'm going to start getting a little bit worried. I don't know what we're doing wrong, guys. We're fourth in the Serie A. Once again, only four points behind Atalanta. How do Atalanta win the Serie A before we do? We also got knocked out of the Super Cup in the semis. And we made the quarters of the Coppa Italia. This season so far has been the worst one yet. However, However, guys, our start in the Champions League has been phenomenal. We've also beaten Man City in the round of 16. And we've smashed PSG 4-2. And we've smashed Inter Milan 5-3. We're playing Barca in the final. That team, however, is not exactly a walk in the pot. This isn't going to be an easy game. But can we get Roma their first Champions League in good news? How long? We've smashed Barca 4-1 in the UCL final. We've got Roma their first Champions League at this takeover. And I think the players deserve it, man. Pellegrini, Abraham, Boldan. Anzi, Gondal, Tal have all put in such a good shift. And this does mean as we approach the halfway mark, we've only got two trophies. However, I feel like the rest of this takeover, we are going to start actually winning trophies. But is the wheel going to have something to say about this? Or is he actually going to let us have this one? Oh, for God's sake, it's a transfer ban. Don't make a single sign in this year. Well, that's just freaking fine and dandy, isn't it? But to be fair, this is probably the best time to get a transfer ban because this team all around is absolutely world class but we've got a transfer ban so let's go to the end of the season to see how we've done i can't believe it guys we finally made 
made Roma the best team in Italy. We've won the Serie A title without spending a goddamn penny this year. And we've won the Super Cup this year too. But we didn't quite win the Coppa Italia. But we've won the treble by winning the Super Cup. And we've won the Champions League back to back securing the quadruple for the first time in this video. And just feast your eyes on these stats. Abraham, Pellegrini, Tal, Baldanzi and Gondau all putting in a shift and all taking us to that quadruple. All I can say is it's about damn time as well. I just hope that we can carry this on until the very end of this takeover now. But ladies and gents, for the sixth time in this video so far, we're going to be spinning the wheel rewind time. This sounds promising. What's this? Make three players of your choice. Five years younger but make no signings that is genuinely a game changer because truth be told some of our best players are starting to get on a bit which makes this decision relatively easy to be honest lorenzo pellegrini is definitely going to be made younger he's been our top goal scorer almost every single season since this takeover began i'd be an absolute fool not to make him younger i'm also going to make juan luca mancini five years younger too and i'm making abraham five years younger too guys he's been a beast for us since he came back into the team i want to keep him until the very end of this video if I can. And there we go guys, Pellegrini, Mancini and Abraham are all five years younger and look at how young our starting 11 is now man, we are absolutely set. The question is though, can these boys replicate what they did last year or are they going to prove it to be just a one season wonder? Well would you look at this guys, we've once again won the Serie A title, have we finally got a bit of momentum? I think so as we've also won the Super Cup and we've won the Coppa Italia and we've won the Super Cup as well, we're on for five trophies now. We've actually done it, guys. We've won five trophies this year after winning the Champions League. We've torn everybody apart this year. And the stats are literally the best they've ever looked. 40 and 4 for Abraham, 26 and 13 for Pellegrini, 25 and 17 for Baldanti, and 20 and 5 for Tal. What a goddamn year. But you look at the team, guys, and it's really not all that surprising. It is an absolutely world-class team, and hopefully we can just keep this going. But I'll be honest, guys, this wheel's been way too kind to us lately. Oh, I bloody knew it. What's this one? What's bad luck? Give your three best players to Lazio, Napoli, and Inter. You choose who goes where and make no signings. You've got to be kidding me. Just when we were doing well. And look who our three best players are, man. Lucas Chavalier, Lorenzo Pellegrini, and Ball Danzi. Three of our best players from the started this takeover till now and we've got to give them away for free. The worst thing is as well, we're giving our three highest rated players to our three biggest rivals and competitors in the Serie A. We are absolutely screwed for season seven. But ultimately guys, I had no choice, I had to do it. So Chevalier has gone to Napoli, Inter Milan have got Tommaso Baldanzi and Pellegrini has gone to Lazio. I don't think there was a right or wrong decision here guys. Each choice was just as bad as the other really, wasn't it? I must say though guys, we have been very lucky when you think about it because this team is still freaking world class man obviously it's not as good as it once was but it's still not bad at all i mean obviously we changed the formation to make this whip but malamed's replaced Baldanzi and pellegrini in that cam roll and obviously verbruggen's coming for chevalier we're definitely not going to win five trophies don't get it twisted but don't write us off at the same time i still think we'll do well and this is what i mean guys we finished with 98 points in this Serie A, and we are once again the best team in italy and we've once again won the super cup and we've won the Coppa Italia again. Guys, against all odds, we might actually win five trophies again. Okay, maybe not. Porto beat us in the Super Cup. And we got knocked out in the UCL quarters by United. But you know what? I will absolutely take the treble after losing our three best players. But fair play to Tal and Abraham. They've really stepped up to the plate. 46 and 12 for Abraham and 30 and 3 for Tal. The good news is though, guys, we've got the worst option out of the way on that wheel. So hopefully from now until the end of this takeover, it's relatively smooth sailing. But let's be honest, I should know better by now. It's never that simple with the wheel. I mean, look at that. Come on, what's cheapskate? Only sign free agents. Really? Really? Come on, man. We've legit got just under 300 million euros to spend and we can't use it on transfers. We've got to sign free agents. That wheel can get to heck. And unfortunately, these pair were the only decent players on that free agents list. Bento, Estrella and also Luca Ryman. They're not going to do anything apart from sit on that subs bench, but at least it gives us a little bit more depth. Well, this is the team going into Season 8 of this takeover, and to be fair, we are in good hands. This is the same team that last year won the treble, so hopefully we can do that again this year, or maybe even get the quadruple. Well, that's just not going to happen, guys. We failed to win the Serie A this time by four points. And we failed to win the Super Cup as well. And Lazio knocked us out of the Coppa Italia as well. This season is not looking good. But we've gone on to win the Champions League. How do we do so poorly everywhere? 
anywhere else but win the biggest competition at club level. But I'll tell you how, guys. Tammy Abraham, he got 45 goal contributions in 57 games, and 12 of those goal contributions came in the Champions League as well. But as you can see from the leaderboard, we're not going to catch Madrid or City. So for the remaining two seasons of this takeover, we're just going to try and win as many trophies as humanly possible. And with the wheel only having good options left on it, that really does bode well for our chances of winning a lot of trophies. What is game changer? Unlimited budget sign any three players you want. Absolutely fantastic. And true to the wheels weird, it's given us unlimited amounts of money and I know exactly what I'm going to spend this money on. You guys probably guessed it. Tommaso Baldanzi is coming back. Lucas Chevalier is coming back and also Lorenzo Pellegrini is coming back. I'm getting the band back together in season nine. And there we go, guys. We have welcomed all three of these players back to Roma for a whopping combined total of 920 million euros. But they are worth every penny because look at the state of this team now, man. I'm telling you guys now, a five trophy season is on the cards again. And we're officially back on track. We are once again the best team in Italy by a big margin. This time, 24 points. We've destroyed Italian football. And we've also won the Super Cup, so that's the double. But Torino knocked us out in the Coppa Italia. But we have secured the treble with the Super Cup, ironically beating Torino to do it. And we've got the quadruple after beating Lille in the Champions League final. 7-6 on pens. Get in. And look at the stats, man. Abraham, Tal, and Pellegrini. Pellegrini's not lost a step since he left us, man. He's picked up where he left off. The sad thing is, guys, we've only got one season left in charge of this Roma team, so let's end it on a high and try to win five trophies in our final year in this takeover. And as we enter season 10, there's one more spin of this wheel we've got to make, and it is actually the wheel's choice. So what's this going to be? Only sign players whose first or last name starts with R-O-M-A. Okay, that's quite interesting, actually. I mean, the good news is we've got 284 million to spend on these players. The question is, what players are we actually going to spend it on? And after searching for a while, guys, I found Ronald Araujo, who's 33 years old. He's 91 overall, still a world-class player, and his first and last name begin with R and A, so he fits the bill. And I found Fabio Moretti, who currently plays for Nottingham Forest of all teams. He's 28, a very, very good player, and we can sign him because his surname begins with an M. And there we go, guys, for the combined total of 190.5 million euros we signed both of these players on two year deals and now the starting 11 looks like this going into the final season of this takeover and you guys already know what I want from this team man five trophies is the target last year we got the quadruple so there's no reason why with a better defense we can't get five this time and this is the start we were after guys we are once again the best team in Italy by 30 points and that's trophy number one made that trophy number two is we've won the super cup made that the treble is we've won the Coppa Italia and made that the quadruple because we've beaten our biggest rivals last year to win the Super Cup. We win the Champions League. That's the five trophy target complete. Oh, Barcelona, did you have to, man? We get knocked out in the quarters by bloody Barca. They really just did have to spoil the party, didn't they? I mean, in fairness, they did go on to win it by quite a big margin in the end, but still, that should have been us. Especially with these stats, man. Abraham, Tal, Boldanzi, Pellegrini. What a goddamn season for all four of these guys. And this is the team we end this takeover with. Genuinely one of the strongest teams we've ever built. I'm telling you now, this takeover series so far, we've built some monstrosities and this one's no different. But we do end this takeover with Roma, with Abraham being our top goal scorer, Pellegrini being our top assistant. And overall, we won 23 trophies. And you know what, guys? I feel like if we'd have done a little better in the opening seasons of this takeover, we'd have actually match Real Madrid or maybe even surpass them but unfortunately Roma despite their best efforts finished rock bottom of the leaderboard but that is where we're going to leave this video guys if you've enjoyed it leave a like on it smash that subscribe button help me beat Raman to 100,000 subscribers and if you're still here guys you may as well click right here because this is a banger of a video too